Hey, I'm Studson and welcome back to my first video. I'm going to take you through the process of me creating this Nook's Cranny using pretty much cheap materials like foam board, balsa wood, and some corrugated paper. Typically I like to jump straight into a model without much of a plan and just sort of see where it takes me. But in this case I had the game art to reference. Granted it was only from one side so I had to sort of extrapolate what the other sides would look like based off the interior of Nook's Cranny. I knew I wanted to build it at 28mm scale, so technically it could fit in a Dungeons & Dragons game. Knowing that I wanted the door to be 1.5 inches tall by 1 inches wide, all the other sizes were extrapolated from there. Nook's Cranny sort of bows out a little bit as you go up, sort of like a Dr. Seuss house, so I ended up slicing off a few slivers from the edge of each side so that once it's constructed, it's not totally straight up and down. And with the first walls on, now we have a cute little trapezoid. I used a door template I made to sketch out where the door would be and then as well as the window. It definitely would have been easier to do this before the walls were glued together, but whoops. And then I used a craft blade to cut those out. Next we're building the little, I don't know what it is, the little addition that's on the left side of the house. I assume it's Timmy and Tommy's honey bucket, so that's what we're going with. The roof slopes off to the left, so we're slicing off a little bit of an angle here. I love foam board because it's super easy to work with. If you make a mistake and forget to slice something off, it's super forgiving and you can just correct it or just remake it. I specifically get the foam board from the Dollar Store or the Dollar Tree or whatever you have near you because the brand they have actually has a really weak adhesive that keeps the paper on which makes it super easy to peel off. Normally I would have tried to do the gables here as part of the initial cuts of the two short walls but I forgot to and that's okay because I'm just going to ultimately cover up everything with balsa wood anyway. For each side of the roof, I'm cutting it at an angle along the edge so that when the seams come together, the ridge is nice and closed. This will make it a lot easier to lay on the faux metal corrugated sheeting later so that we don't have any huge gaps that need to be covered up with other material. And there you have it, our ugly white house is done. Next it was time to start adding some outer details, so I'm starting with some balsa wood, which I'm heavily scratching up with just a sharp object. You could use a push pin, ice pick, whatever you have. And I'm, I spent probably 10 minutes scratching this up. The important thing is you add some large uh, wood grain. Yeah, hold on one second. Balsa wood is super smooth, so we need to add some wood grain to match that exaggerated but simplified Animal Crossing look. After scratching up the balsa wood with the texture, it got sliced into a bunch of different boards of varying sizes and then basically just filled in over the entire model using hot glue. This part of the process took the longest, but it was also the most rewarding to see Nook's Cranny actually start to take shape. For the window panes on the inside of here, I used a thinner one millimeter balsa wood. And the reason I did this is because I didn't want the foam to show through when you look through the windows later on. I'm pretty bad about measuring something precisely before I cut it. I'll usually do this where I'll just sort of put the wood in place and sort of make a little notch with the craft knife and then slice it out. For this part it was easier just to lay down the entire length of wood and then clip it off with a pair of clippers and send it flying across the room because I was getting kind of bored and I thought it'd be fun to search for it for about 10 minutes. There we go, all boarded up. Time for some finer details. Here I'm using some tacky glue for connecting some tiny finer wood details. This is for the panes that are going to go around the door and around the window. I'm name dropping tacky glue because I love it, but you can pretty much use any white PVA glue. Whoa, uh, there we go. Some final last door details and next we're going to move on to the window. For windows like these, I like to raid the recycle bin and keep any clear plastic that I could use rather than having to actually buy any sort of window material. Like the door, I surrounded the perimeter of the window with some thin strips of balsa wood and PVA glue. And then I did the same for the inside as well. Tiny little window panes. 
So I'm not actually gluing down the window yet because I knew I was going to be painting the entire thing with spray paint and I didn't want to paint over the clear window. So I'm just sort of mapping out where it's going to go and putting a perimeter of a window pane there so I'll be able to slide it back in place later. I'm super excited about corrugated paper. I don't even have to try to make metal sheeting. The scale of the paper pretty much already matches corrugated metal sheeting, so after some slicing and gluing, it's already looking like a roof. Next I placed the little nubs of what look like wood beams sticking out from underneath the roof. There aren't actually any supports there, so this is just a cosmetic detail. For the door handle, I used a tiny piece of plastic from the plastic backing of a package of socks, so make sure you use exactly that or your model will be garbage. The ridge on the top of the roof has these cute little rivets, which I luckily had some tiny little tack nails laying around for. And with that, the basic shape is done and it's ready for a base. For the base, I also used foam board just like I did for the rest of the house, but I really wouldn't recommend it because after I started putting a lot of paint and glue on it, I realized it started to warp. What you'd really want to use here is something with a little more structure, probably a heavy chipboard or an MDF board. But the foam was super easy to work with because I could perfectly trim out the size I needed. And then I glued it to my base using hot glue. And you might be able to see that I tapered the edges of the base a little bit. That's just to give it more of a natural look that blends it down to the table. Here I'm tracing out the edges of the wall where Nook's Cranny will be in contact with the base. I'm ultimately not going to be gluing down the house to the base because I want to be able to detach the building if I ever want to use it in tabletop gaming or maybe put it in a different diorama. Nook's Cranny has a nice rustic little log fence that goes around it. Oh, and there's a perfect stick just waiting outside. Wow. I'm going to use the stick as a scale log to be cut into all the lengths I need for the fence. Off camera you can't see, but they're flying all around my room and I think I lost like four or five of them. These get glued around the perimeter of the base and later on I'll take some twine and wrap it around the top of each one. Now I hear you all asking, when are you going to start using some Liquitex modeling paste to add some texture to your foam and make it appear more like a stucco or dirt texture? And I'm going to do that right now. I also go through with a rolled up paper towel and sort of add a dappled texture so that when I paint it you don't see any brush strokes. Here I'm sealing the whole thing in a mixture of black paint and matte Mod Podge. This is a great way to add a primer and a sealant to your model all in one step. I actually learned this from another YouTuber, Black Magic Craft. I highly recommend his channel if you're interested in building terrain for D&D and tabletop games. This is magic. I do this on pretty much any piece of terrain I build now. The roof still has kind of a green tint to it, so I'm spraying the whole thing in a Tamiya Gray Fine Surface Primer to just fill in any nooks and crannies I might have missed while putting the Mod Podge on in the previous step. This gives me a nice uniform colored base coat to work with when I start to add paint. For paint, you don't have to use anything fancy. I'm using the cheapest acrylics I could find. I think these cost about a dollar per bottle, but I think the beauty of a weathered house is in the imperfections, so you don't need expensive paint. Garbage paint is great paint. After browning up the floor and the dirt, I'm now hitting the edge of the wall with some gray. I'm going to be covering the entire house in several layers of paint, working out from darker to lighter. So we're just going to hit the entire house with an earth brown. The nice thing about these acrylics is they dry super fast. Now we're painting our metal corrugated roof with blue. This is the blue called cobalt blue. Nook's Cranny is actually fairly light in wood tone, so we're going over most of the house with a toffee and a khaki brown, and then taking that khaki and dry brushing it over the entire house. You want to try to get almost all of the paint off your brush before you start painting. The goal here is that this paint should just be hitting up the finer details at the top, so all that dark paint and other layers you've been putting down can still show through below. Next I'm priming the door handle in a black paint and then I'm using a metallic Tamiya gunmetal gray. I'm very excited for this next part because it's the first time I get to try out a static grass applicator. What the heck is that? You start by laying down a layer of static grass adhesive, which is just a fancy marketing word for glue. 
and through the power of electricity generated from a 9 volt battery, each of the blades of grass get electrically charged as they pass out of the hopper and then they stick straight up in the glue. It's sort of how the hairs on the back of your neck stick up when you watch an ASMR crafting video. Make sure you save the blades of grass that were too weak to adhere to your model. They'll do better next time. Using a comb you can brush up some of the more resistant blades of grass and now you have a full lawn. Time to dry brush the roof in some lighter shades. We're using a pretty cool blue. This one's called Cool Blue. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. With the brush, I'm hitting any sort of raised edge highlight, as well as anything that might have gotten worn over time, like the ridge on this roof. Now, I don't have a very steady hand when it comes to painting, so for the Nook's Cranny sign, I'm going to use a pro move called Tracing. I overlay this little printout I have onto my piece of cardboard and then take a sharp object and press kind of hard to get an indent into the cardstock below. I can then use the grooves here to sort of help guide my paintbrush as I paint over the lines. It's lumpy, but I think it kind of works for the art direction of the sign. Now it's twine for the twine that I talked about earlier. This twine is very hairy, but using a lighter you can quickly singe off some of those stray hairs. Be careful though as fire is sometimes hot. I use super glue to adhere the twine to each post. With a dab, I would stick the twine and then wrap it around a couple times before moving on to the next. I accidentally loosened some hairs while wrapping the twine so I couldn't resist bringing out the fire again. By the way, something I learned is that super glue is super flammable so wait for it to dry first. The house is pretty much done at this point so it's time to do some other finer detailing. Here I'm finishing up the drop box which I painted using the same colors as the house except for a nice terracotta orange for the lid. For the label on the top of the drop box, I found this random piece of junk mail that happened to be blue and white, dipped it in some watered down Mod Podge, and then sealed it to the top of the lid. The printed one would look nicer, but the recycle bin is a great place for resources. For the hot item board, I used more balsa wood and cardstock and then sealed it with Mod Podge and primer. Hey, here's a fun fact. I had jury duty scheduled for the beginning of March, but then it suddenly got cancelled because of the stay-at-home order, which is sad for the justice system, but perfect for this crafting project because a barcode makes a perfect abstracted little sheet of paper. Tiny nails as push pins, and then I painted them red. I wanted a nice clean edge for the model, so I just took some acrylic black paint and went around the entire edge of the base. And it's done! Let's roll some beauty shots. And there it is. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Studson. This is Studson Studio. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. I have more plans in the future to make more videos about terrain and buildings from other video games and TV shows, as well as videos on the custom and kit-bashed gunpla I'm working on as well. If you want to see more of the pictures of the things I'm working on, head over to instagram.com slash studio where you can see some of my past work. But until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.